Today's lesson is on polygons in the coordinate plane. Take a minute to read over the learning goal in the scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We can classify figures in the coordinate plane using the formulas for distance, midpoint, and slope. Take a minute to review the formulas we will need to help us classify polygons in the coordinate plane. If we want to determine whether sides are congruent or diagonals are congruent, we should use the distance formula. If we want to determine the coordinates of the midpoint of a side, or whether diagonals bisect each other, we should use the midpoint formula. If we want to determine whether opposite sides are parallel, diagonals are perpendicular, or sides are perpendicular, we should use the slope formula. In example one, we will classify a triangle. Is triangle ABC scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? Remember, scalene means that none of the sides are congruent, Isosceles means that two of the sides are congruent, and equilateral means that all three sides are congruent. Let's begin by finding the coordinates of each point. Point A is at ordered pair 0, 1. Point B is at ordered pair 4, 4. And point C is at ordered pair 7, 0. Since we need to determine the length of each side in order to classify this triangle, let's start with the distance formula. Using the ordered pairs for points A and B, let's find the length of segment AB. The length of segment AB is equal to the square root of 0 minus 4 squared plus 1 minus 4 squared. 0 minus 4 is negative 4 and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 4 squared is 16 and negative 3 squared is 9. 16 plus 9 is 25 and the square root of 25 is 5. So the length of segment AB is 5. Now let's use the ordered pairs for points B and C to find the length of segment BC. The length of segment BC is equal to the square root of 4 minus 7 squared plus 4 minus 0 squared. 4 minus 7 is negative 3 and 4 minus 0 is 4. Negative 3 squared is 9 and 4 squared is 16. 9 plus 16 is 25 and since the square root of 25 is 5, the length of segment BC is 5. Since the length of segment AB is 5 and the length of segment BC is 5, we at least have an isosceles triangle. Let's now use the ordered pairs for points A and C to find the length of segment AC. The length of segment AC is equal to the square root of 0 minus 7 squared plus 1 minus 0 squared. 0 minus 7 is negative 7 and 1 minus 0 is 1. Negative 7 squared is 49 and 1 squared is 1. 49 plus 1 is 50, and the square root of 50 is 5 radical 2, or approximately 7.1. Since the length of segment AC is not equal to the length of segment AB and BC, then we have an isosceles triangle. Pause the video and do you try number 1. Triangle DEF has vertices D at 0, 0, E at 1, 4, and F at 5, 2. Is triangle DEF scalene, isosceles, or equilateral? Let's start by using the distance formula. To find the length of segment DE, let's use the ordered pairs for points D and E in the distance formula. So the length of segment DE equals the square root of 0 minus 1 squared plus 1 minus 4 squared. 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 1 squared is 1, and negative 3 squared is 9. 1 plus 9 is 10, and the square root of 10 is approximately 3.2. So the length of segment DE is approximately 3.2. Now let's use the ordered pairs for points E and F to find the length of segment EF. The length of segment EF is equal to the square root of 1 minus 5 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. 1 minus 5 is negative 4, and 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 4 squared is 16, and 2 squared is 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. The square root of 20 is 2 radical 5, or approximately 4.5. So the length of segment EF is approximately 4.5. Now let's use the ordered pairs for points D and F to find the length of segment DF. The length of segment DF is equal to the square root of 0 minus 5 squared, plus 0 minus 2 squared. 0 minus 5 is negative 5, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 5 squared is 25, and negative 2 squared is 4. 25 plus 4 is 29, 
and the square root of 29 is approximately equal to 5.4. So the length of segment DF is approximately 5.4. Since all three sides of triangle DEF have different lengths, this is a scalene triangle. In example two, we will classify a parallelogram. Is parallelogram A, B, C, D a rhombus? Explain. We know that a rhombus has four sides that are congruent and diagonals that are perpendicular. So we can do two things. We can either find the length of each side, so use the distance formula four times to see if the length of each side is congruent, or we can find the slope of each diagonal to see if the diagonals are perpendicular. Let's find the slope of each diagonal since that will be less work. Let's begin with the slope formula. Now let's find the slope of diagonal AC by using the ordered pairs for points A and C in the slope formula. So the slope of segment AC equals 0 minus 5 over negative 2 minus 4. 0 minus 5 is negative 5 and negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. We can simplify this to 5 sixths. So the slope of segment AC is 5 sixths. In order for segment BC to be perpendicular, it needs to be the opposite reciprocal of 5 sixths or negative 6 over 5. Now let's use the ordered pairs for points B and D in the slope formula. So the slope of segment BD is negative 4 minus 1 over 0 minus 2. 4 minus 1 is 3, and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So the slope of segment BD is negative 3 over 2. Since the slopes are not opposite reciprocals, the diagonals are not perpendicular, which means parallelogram ABCD is not a rhombus. Pause the video and do you try number 2. Parallelogram MNPQ has vertices M at 0, 1, n at negative 1, 4, p at 2, 5, and q at 3, 2. For part a, is parallelogram m, n, p, q a rectangle? Explain. We know that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent, so let's start by using the distance formula to find if diagonals m, p have an equal length to diagonal n, q. For the length of segment m, p, Let's use the ordered pairs for points M and P in the distance formula. So the length of segment MP is equal to the square root of 0 minus 2 squared plus 1 minus 5 squared. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 and 1 minus 5 is negative 4. Negative 2 squared is 4 and negative 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 16 is 20 and the square root of 20 is 2 radical 5 which is approximately equal to 4.5. Now let's use the ordered pairs for points N and Q to find the length of diagonal NQ. The length of segment NQ is equal to the square root of negative 1 minus 3 squared plus 4 minus 2 squared. Negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4 and 4 minus 2 is 2. Negative 4 squared is 16 and 2 squared is 4. 16 plus 4 is 20 and the square root of 20 is 2 radical 5, or approximately 4.5. Since both of the diagonals are congruent, then parallelogram MNPQ is a rectangle. For part B, is parallelogram MNPQ also a square? Explain. Since we know that squares have diagonals that are congruent and perpendicular, let's use the slope formula to see if diagonals NP is perpendicular to diagonal NQ. Let's use the ordered pairs for points M and P in the slope formula to find the slope of segment MP. So the slope of segment MP is 1 minus 5 over 0 minus 2. 1 minus 5 is negative 4 and 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So the slope of segment MP is 2. In order for the diagonals to be perpendicular, the slope of segment NQ must be the opposite reciprocal of 2 or negative 1 half. So let's use the ordered pairs for points N and Q to find the slope of segment NQ. The slope of segment NQ is 4 minus 2 over negative 1 minus 3. 4 minus 2 is 2 and negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So the slope of segment NQ is negative 1 half. 
Since the slopes are opposite reciprocals, they are perpendicular. That means parallelogram MNPQ is a square. In example three, we will classify a quadrilateral. A kite is shown below. What is the most precise classification of the quadrilateral formed by connecting the midpoints of the sides of the kite? Let's start by writing down the ordered pairs for each vertex, K, I, T, and E, and then using the midpoint formula to find the midpoint of each side of the kite. Point K is at negative 4, 0. Point I is at 0, 4. Point T is at 8, 0 and point E is at 0, negative 4. To find point A, or the midpoint of segment KI, let's use the ordered pairs for points K and I in the midpoint formula. So point A is at ordered pair, negative 2, 2. Now let's find point B, or the midpoint of segment IT, by using the ordered pairs for points I and T in the midpoint formula. So the ordered pair for point B is 4, 2. To find the ordered pair of point C, or the midpoint of segment TE, let's use the ordered pairs for points T and E in the midpoint formula. So the ordered pair for point C is 4, negative 2. Now let's find the ordered pair for point D, or the midpoint of segment KE, by using the coordinates for points K and E in the midpoint formula. So the midpoint of segment KE is the ordered pair negative 2, negative 2. Now let's go ahead and plot points A, B, C, and D on our kite. Since quadrilateral A, B, C, D looks like a rectangle, let's first check to see if it's a parallelogram by seeing if the opposite sides are congruent. Then let's check to see if it's a rectangle by seeing if it has four right angles. Since segment A, B is horizontal, I can either use the distance formula for a segment on a number line or I can count the distance between points A and B. So I know that the length of segment AB is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units long. The same is true for segment DC. I know that it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units long. Since segments AD and BC are both vertical, we can use the distance formula for a segment on a number line or we can count. So from A to D, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. And segment BC is 1, 2, 3, 4 units long. Since our opposite sides of our quadrilateral are congruent, we know that it is a parallelogram. Since segment AB and DC are both horizontal, and segments AD and BC are both vertical, we know that these two are perpendicular to these two, giving us four right angles. So parallelogram ABCD is more specifically a rectangle. Pause the video and do you try number three. An isosceles trapezoid has vertices A at 0, 0, B at 2, 4, C at 6, 4, and D at 8, 0. What special quadrilateral is formed by connecting the midpoints of the sides of quadrilateral ABCD? Let's begin by finding the midpoint of sides AB, BC, CD, and AD. We'll start with the midpoint formula. And the midpoint of segment AB is E, 1, 2. The midpoint of segment BC is point F at 4, 4. The midpoint of segment CD is point G at 7, 2. And the midpoint of segment AD is point H at 4, 0. Now let's use the distance formula to find the length of each side. The length of segment EF is radical 13, or approximately 3.6. The length of segment FG is the square root of 13, or approximately 3.6. The length of segment GH is the square root of 13, or approximately 3.6. And finally, the length of segment EH is the square root of 13, or approximately 3.6. Since all four sides of this quadrilateral have equal lengths, this quadrilateral is a rhombus. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions regarding the lesson check, be sure to ask me in class. Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Have you climbed any higher on the scale since we began the lesson?